region during this, that flyby in 2005. And we see these four diagonal fractures, huge fractures about 80 miles long, cutting across the South Polar region. Um, and when you superimpose the heat map on top of that, on the right-hand side, you see that there is a lot of heat coming out from just that same area as where the fractures are. We uh, saw temperatures as high as about minus 200 Fahrenheit, which sounds awfully cold, and it is, but the background temperature of the surface is less than minus 300 Fahrenheit. So these things really stood out as warm compared to that very cold background, and so it seemed like there was heat coming out of the interior of Enceladus. So on this new flyby, having made this discovery last time, we really wanted a closer look. And what we did is, from much closer to Enceladus, after Hunter made his measurements, we were able to scan that region inside the white box uh, to see more detail. And the next graphic shows what we found. This is now the new data from that region inside the white box, showing now we see the heat coming out along each of those fractures individually. We see a great deal of detail here. We see a continual line of, of heat radiation along the fractures, but a lot of variation, some areas being much brighter than others. We see some areas that are not on these main tiger stripe fractures at all, but up in the right-hand corner, there's interesting other stuff going on. This is a beautiful map of where the action is on the south pole of Enceladus. Um, now, the composite infrared spectrometer doesn't just take images like this. We get a spectrum at every point, and that allows us to measure the temperature fairly precisely. And we just happened to get lucky that our best data was over the brightest tiger stripe, um, that's what we call these fractures, down in the lower right corner. And so there we were able to get a nice temperature measurement, and we saw temperatures as high as minus 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which again sounds pretty cold, but this is enormously higher than the background temperature, less than, 300 Fahrenheit, less than minus 300 Fahrenheit, and means we have a great deal of energy being delivered to the surface in this region. Um, and so this is really interesting because if we're seeing temperatures up to minus 135 degrees on the surface, we know it's going to be even warmer below that. And it's not out of the bounds of possibility that somewhere down below we're getting temperatures up approaching the uh, temperature of liquid water. Whatever is producing this heat on the surface is going to be producing even more heat underneath. So we're not seeing liquid water or those temperatures, but we're Everything we see, as the closer we look, the more energy we see, the higher temperatures we see, and it's entirely possible that there's going to be liquid water not too far below the surface of these warm fractures. Um, now, we have other data that we've taken recently with the Cassini cameras, uh, which allows us to locate exactly where these geysers are coming out of, and the last graphic shows those uh, locations. This is from previous work done by the Cassini imaging team, showing the main sources of the jets coming out of the South Pole, these geysers. And you see that there's quite a nice correlation with where the heat is coming out. Um, the, the fractures tend, the plumes tend to be coming out of the warmest points on the fractures. And so we're really beginning to get this very comprehensive picture. We have images of the surface to see the geolo geology. We can see where the plumes are coming from. We can see where the heat is coming from. Other Cassini instruments are measuring the composition of the surface directly. Um, but we have even more ways of, of observing the plume and uh, because there's so many wonderful instruments on Cassini that can look at the plume in so many different ways.